everyone. I am going to continue by doing some practice problems related to the traditional square of uh, opposition. So uh, this is section 4.5 and exercise two. The first, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the traditional square to determine whether or not uh, the inferences that are made from the premises to the conclusions are valid or invalid. If they're invalid, then we need to talk about um, the fallacies that are committed. So in the traditional square, it would be things like illicit uh, conversion. Well, I guess it wouldn't be um, not in the traditional square. Conversion wouldn't really be applicable, but like illicit subalternation um, or things like that. Uh, so we'll name them if there are fallacies. So this is number one. Um, all advocates of school prayer are individuals who insist on imposing their views on others. Therefore, some advocates of school prayer are individuals who insist on imposing their views on others. If we change advocates of school prayer to S and individuals who insist on imposing their views on others to P, then the first statement is all S are P. And the second statement is therefore, so therefore is a conclusion indicator word, so we know that's our conclusion. Therefore, some SRP. All right, we're using the traditional square of opposition uh, and the traditional viewpoint. So um, existence matters uh, in universal statements. And what that means is if you have a universal statement in which that is true, um, uh, then, um, and you know that the classes uh, actually exist, then if you have an A-form statement and a universal affirmative statement, all SRP, then the corresponding um, I-form statement, some SRP, is also true. So that's exactly what we have here, right? So if we do the traditional square, we do our X, so um, you've got your A-form, and then that trickles down, remember truth flows down, uh, through the subalternate relation to the uh, I form. Now, now what we have, but we, first we have to determine are these actually existing classes of things that we know that actually exist? And uh, in fact, they are. Uh, there are people who advocate for school prayer who actually exist, and there are people who impose their views on others. Thus, um, if, uh, if this statement is true, which it is, then uh, truth flows down. And that again is through uh, true by subalternation. All right, let's continue. Okay, this is number two. It's false that no jailhouse informants are people who, who can be trusted. Therefore, some jailhouse informants are not people who can be trusted. First thing, let's find out what the structure of these categorical propositions is. So let's eliminate it is false that, or let's take that out for now. If you remove it is false that, we have no jailhouse informants or people that can be trusted. And so if we say it is false that that's the case, then what we're essentially saying is that the statement, no jailhouse informants or people who can be trusted we're assuming that's false. Now that is our initial premise because we have our conclusion indicated indicator word here, therefore. So let's get rid of therefore because we know this is the conclusion anyway. All right. So no jailhouse informants are people who can be trusted. Some jailhouse informants are not people who can be trusted. We're attempting to determine um, uh, the truth or the validity of this. So that what they're saying is that this is a true statement. Um, they're assuming that they're saying thus some jailhouse informants are not people who can be trusted. So essentially what we have here is no S R P. That's the first statement where S is jailhouse informants and P are people who can be trusted. And then we have, therefore, some S are not P. Okay, 
So we know that no SRP is of the E form. And we know that some SR naught P is of the O form. If we look at our square of opposition from the traditional perspective, we're starting with an E and then we're ending with an O. And what we're saying is that the, the E statement is false, thus the O statement is true. And this is not a valid uh, inference to make. This is called illicit subalternation. Um, and that's because of the following. We know that in the subaltern, uh, in the subalternate relation, truth flows down in the traditional square and falsity flows up. Um, it's not the case that of necessity, if you have uh, a false E statement, that the O statement would be true. It's also not the case that of necessity, if you have a false E statement, the corresponding O statement uh, would be false. Thus, we don't know what the truth value of it is immediately. Um, and thus, this is an invalid inference here because it's all, it's all about what you start with. Now, had we started with the O statement being false, then we would know that the corresponding E statement uh, would be false as well. So I'm gonna change this up and show you what that is. But we, since we're starting with the E, we know that in the subalternate relation, E statements do not, uh, falsity does not flow down to O statements and also neither does truth, uh, well, falsity does not lead to truth either. It's not a, a, a differential relationship. Uh, if an E statement is true in the traditional square, truth flows down to the O. But in this case, we know that the initial claim was it is false that jailhouse informants are people who can be uh, who can be trusted. All right, next item. All homemakers are people with real jobs. Therefore, it is false that no homemakers are people with real jobs. So again, when it's not, when it's stated directly, we're assuming that what the person is saying they're expressing is true. So if you have a true statement, all homemakers are people with real jobs, then is it acceptable to have an immediate inference uh, that it's false that no homemakers are people with real jobs? So again, we know this is the conclusion, so let's get rid of the therefore. And what we have here is it's saying it's false that. So our conclusion is, it's false that no homemakers are people with real jobs. Um, okay, so are we allowed to make this uh, inference? So really what we have here is all SRP, therefore no SRP, uh, this being true and this being false. Is this a valid inference to make? Well, if we look at our table, traditional square of opposition, we know that the contrary relation is one in which if an A statement is true, the corresponding E statement must of necessity be false. And we also know that it goes both ways. If an E statement is true, then we know that the corresponding A statement would be false. In this case, we have an A form that's true, leading to an E form that's false. And thus, we know that this is a valid uh, uh, inference to make, um, immediate inference, uh, using the, and what is the relationship? The relationship here is called the contrary relation. Uh, and you can find a traditional square in your textbook or in a lot of different places. So, and so whenever you talk about the rule that applies in these immediate inferences, you would use the contrary between A and E, the subalternate between E and O and A and I. Remember those go both ways with truth flowing down and falsity flowing up. Uh, the subcontrary uh, between the I and the O, it's the opposite relation of A and E. 
uh, if one is false, the other must be true and vice versa. And then finally, the contradictory, finally the contradictory, which is the easiest. Um, the contrary is pretty easy too. Uh, but contradictory, if you have a, uh, uh, well, the A and O propositions always have a different truth value um, of necessity and the E and I propositions uh, would always have uh, the opposite truth values uh, of necessity. So that's a few examples. Um, I hope that helps. And uh, now do your best to continue and to uh, evaluate these immediate inferences.